can now reveal the winner of the X Factor 2011, Little Mix. Little Mix is a girl group for the history books. I say this because the foursome is taking the industry by storm and it's not just their music. Jade Thurwell just spilled the tea and revealed the truth behind Little Mix's success following a fallout from Simon Cowell's music label. And let's just say she had some choice words for Mr. Cowell. And Little Mix just dropped their latest single, which appears to throw some major shade at their former boss, Simon Cowell. Have you spoken to the girls about it? No. <laughs> There's no WhatsApp conversation going on there. No, we don't have WhatsApp. <laughs>Hey everyone, and welcome back to Exposing SMG. Today, we are going to be talking about a group that we have never really mentioned on this channel before, and that is Little Mix and the sad reality of what they had to face with their previous record label and Simon Cowell. Does anything ever end well if Simon is involved? Asking for a friend. In today's video, we are discussing everything Little Mix has publicly exposed on their record label and their hardships with Simon Cowell. If you guys want a video about Jesse leaving Little Mix, please let us know in the comments below. Let us also know if you are interested in seeing a video about what One Direction went through since they also had to deal with Simon and his record label. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe and let us know other videos you'd like to see from us. Let's start. For those of you who don't know, Little Mix are a British girl band that was formed on X Factor in 2011. 2011 was also the same year they won X Factor. From then on, they instantly became a huge success and solidified their status as they continuously formed and broke girl group records. Today, they hold five number one singles in the UK and have released six albums. Problems with Psycho and Simon Cowell. When Little Mix won the X Factor in 2011, they signed with Simon Cowell's label, Psycho Music. In January 2013, they signed with Columbia Records, which is a North American label. So basically, Columbia Records would be responsible for dealing with them in North America. In November 2018, it was announced that Little Mix split with Psycho, and then Psycho confirmed that they are splitting with Modest Management as well. Modest Management is the same management company that is home to Little Mix, One Direction, Five Seconds of Summer, and so on. Following their split with Psycho, they signed with RCA UK, which will serve as their new record label. So this begs the question, why did they leave? Here is why they departed from Simon Cowell. Little Mix and Simon didn't really get along throughout the years. He had a vision for them and they didn't want to execute it. It's also important to note that Simon and the girls didn't interact that much since they mainly went through the label and the label's executives. Since the start, the girls have been heavily involved with the creation of their music and their concepts. Since they actually came up with a lot of cool concepts, the label liked it and moved forward with it. However, there were a lot of times where they clashed. It's reported that the final straw that Little Mix had with Simon and Psycho was over the writing credits of Woman Like Me. The song was originally written by Jess Glynn, Ed Sheeran, and Steve Mack. The Sun reports that the girls had added additional lyrics but didn't get any writing credits alongside the rest of the writers. They were upset because of their lack of recognition and they didn't want any publishing money. It's said that Simon got them the writing credits, but it's nowhere to be found on any official writing credit sites. Simon spoke to The Sun about this situation, and his entitlement was literally bouncing off the walls. He said, The only reason I got annoyed was that it's easy to paint this picture of Psycho as this dark, awful place where all we're trying to do is rip artists off and make them unhappy. I suppose why I'm glad I'm talking to you guys today, at least I can tell you what really happened. It was just embarrassing, but funnily enough, I was more annoyed. Again, not about me, but about the fact people who had worked so hard in my company were being misrepresented. Why do artists think they're more important than staff members? They are not, they're the same. 
The irony was the record they were arguing about, which is women like me, they didn't want to record. This was one of those ironic times that we were having a hit and nobody was happy. It wasn't down to money. Basically, they said we'd done a terrible job. I had agreed not to talk about this publicly because I thought it was a private matter. I said, we can't work with the management. It's as simple as that. It was said that their split with Simon and his label was said to be on positive terms, but we all know that's not true. His statement was very manipulative and he turned this whole thing into Little Mix thinking they're better than the people who work at the company. When the truth is, they were being mistreated and he just didn't want to hear their mouths. He wanted them to be grateful that he even signed them in the first place. This isn't really surprising because in general, Simon Cowell isn't a nice person. He is your average celebrity douche who thinks he can do whatever he wants because he's rich and famous. He looks at women as sex objects who are there to please him. And there is proof of this. Alicia Duval, one of Simon's ex-girlfriends, said that one night they had sex 11 times and that every time they had sex, he would judge her and give pointers on how she could improve. However, he didn't think he had anything he should improve on. She claims that their relationship ended after he was tired of her like an old toy. In his book, Simon wrote about another woman, Lisa Forward, and said that he dumped her because she was rubbish in bed. He literally admitted this as if it was normal. Sharon Osborne has worked with Simon before, and she came out to say that he doesn't like overweight people, and in general, he can't see people as individuals. She says, Simon doesn't have an ability to see individuals. He doesn't like people who are overweight. Seriously, that's why he turned down Jennifer Hudson. That's why he wouldn't champion her on the show American Idol. But it's the truth. He's very dated. She also described him as superficial and that he removed her from X Factor 2017 because she is too old. I'm no Sharon Osbourne fan because she also isn't the nicest of people, but everything she said about Simon is true to his core. After learning all of that about Simon, we can see why he clashed with Little Mix, who are the embodiment of woman empowerment to their core. What does this tell us? That they never got along with Simon because he probably saw them as objects that he could just dress up in skimpy outfits, and that's not who they were. Little Mix does what Little Mix wants to do not what Simon says. Which brings me to their song, Not A Pop Song, which is literally about Simon. They sing, they look for picture perfect, don't look deeper than the surface. Bubblegum always pops and stars they fade out, life never stops. I don't do what Simon says, get the message cause it's red. That's just life, it never plays fair, set to follow any dream, be a puppet on a string, works for you but that isn't me. A hamster on the wheel, that's how it feels trying to be real. These unrealistic expectations said we'll make it if we fake it. This is literally about their relationship with Simon and his label. For the most part, Simon got along with Fifth Harmony because they were willing to do whatever he wanted them to do. Here's a stupid song with some middle school lyrics and hey, wear this skimpy outfit and dance like that. And they would which is fine because they wanted to do whatever it took. Were they miserable? Oh, of course, but they played the picture-perfect puppet-on-a-string role. In the end, it rewarded them in some aspects. Did they last? No, but they were offered many opportunities. Jay told You Magazine, I remember walking into an early label meeting and saying, this is who we want to be, this is the campaign we want. This is the imagery we want. We knew our brand from the get-go and we very much steered that ship. What helped them out was the fact that they also hit it big as soon as they debuted and brought ideas that the label liked. But things started going south when they were constantly mistreated, didn't approve of their ideas, and when Little Mix wanted more creative control. Switching labels days before they released LM5 really messed things up for them. Jade said, We had a bit of a switch of labels and that really fucked us over. It was hard to put all of our creativity out there exactly how we would have liked to have done. The LM5 album was very heavily on women's rights, what it feels like to be a woman, and our experiences in the industry. 
this brings us to our next part flirt to get your song played on the radio this is something jade exposed in little mix's asos magazine shoot and interview in november 2018 she said someone from our u.s record label said go and flirt with all those important men I was like, why have I got to go in and flirt to get my song on the radio? In the beginning, we were told we shouldn't be involved in our music videos. We were told by one massive producer in the US that we shouldn't be writing. We should just be given songs. We realized we as women have to work 10 times as hard, which is really annoying because we do write songs. Yeah, kind of sad that this is the reality of the music industry. With the rise of the Me Too movement, and industry executives scared of being exposed, Hollywood is becoming about 5% more self-aware. However, even then, the whole flirt to get your song played on the radio is something that happens daily in the industry, and it probably won't go away anytime soon. The thing is, men dominate the industry, and by men, I don't mean your average famous singers. I'm talking about powerful VIPs, industry executives, CEOs, and so on. When someone else holds the power, you either do what they say or don't. And by the looks of it, Little Mix didn't. Someone who did do this though is Camila Cabello, and she knew exactly what to say and do to break away from Fifth Harmony and have a hit song. Am I shaming her for doing this? No, it's kind of the unwritten rule. Little Mix wasn't about to do that though, they are very true to themselves and they view flirting with men to grow in the industry as something beneath them. I applaud them for not giving into it, but tell me, did they ever have a hit song on American radio? No. And that's the punishment for not playing the game. Being overworked. As much as we like to say we don't care when the rich and famous complain, at the end of the day, they are humans. Also, artists require an insane amount of strength to put on shows that they do. When it comes to performing and touring, artists often lose their minds because they are overworked and their limits are being pushed like never before. In Little Mix's books, Jesse reveals exactly that. Before performing on America's Got Talent in 2015, Jesse said, On the day, my shoulder went and I couldn't move. In the end, I had something like 50 injections and my back was smothered in bruises. Before the show, when I was getting my hair and makeup done, people were feeding me coffee to wake me up. I was so out of it, I can't remember anything about the performance. Just that on stage, I couldn't get my balance. It was awful. It was the worst thing I've had to do. The pain got so bad, I was in bed screaming. What's weird in this job is that people don't seem to believe we get ill like everyone else does, or that people close to us get ill and we need to be with them. She also said that she was given antibiotics for a tooth issue and they were so powerful they made her vomit. She was also very stressed about her mom's heart condition and that resulted in her infected ear starting to bleed. So it's safe to say that they were being overworked and missing a performance was worse than just performing in pain. The rest of the girls have also been open about their issues that have affected them a lot. Perry talks about how anxiety impacted her, Jade opened up about her eating disorder, and Leanne spoke about how racism affected her. The girls have definitely endured a lot in this industry, and in this video we spoke about the sad untold truth about what they went through. Let us know what you thought in the comments below and what you think about Jesse leaving Little Mix. Do you think Little Mix is better off as a trio or do you think they need Jesse as their fourth member again? Thanks and I'll see you next time.